Vi er klart til opptak. Treffer du? still playing detective. How quick. I can assure you that I can get to the bottom of this. I never saw professional fee. Murder, missing treasure, ghost. Nine lives, this one. Hello, welcome to Unrestricted View. My name's James Wren. I'm the festival director. And today I'm joined by writer-director Gillian Harker from the film Cross. Hi, Gillian. How are Hi. you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So, I mean, um, how has lockdown been for you? It's been a weird year, isn't it, for, for us creatives? So, um, have it you... Has been, yeah, I mean, um, I've kind of just tried to take it in my stride. Like, I've been quite okay with it. And I know a lot of people have been struggling with it, but I think, you know, I'm a single person, I don't have any dependents. I've still managed to get a little bit of work here and there. So I'm just trying to keep all right I was living with a housemate I'm now living by myself so yeah I could try to take it in my stride but I know a lot of people have had it a million times worse so I think I've been all right <laughs> I mean it's been I've got a little nephew who's who was born January 2020 so that was the worst thing not being able to you know smother him in cuddles <laughs> as regularly as maybe I wanted to but apart from that yeah how have you found it yeah uh, okay I think much the same I mean I'm um... You know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm one of the luckier ones. We have these sort of f um, projects and festivals, so I feel like I could do stuff, even though we haven't yeah. physically been able to make a film. Although hopefully, hopefully we are soon. Um, I've yeah. quite enjoyed the um, time to slow down and just think. I've been able to, I shot another film in December, a short film, and um, I did a music video in February. And I don't think I would have been able to have as much time to put into all that stuff if I had not been unable to work as much <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. Um, my yeah. muggle job <laughs> it's funny isn't it how sometimes these things work in your favor and you think actually you know you know i suppose with a positive outlook there, there are so many things that i've done which i probably wouldn't have done or, or you know wouldn't have got around to doing maybe yeah. or just as you say think about things from a different perspective you know and um, yeah so um okay um cross where did the idea come from um well I get asked this a lot and it's quite complicated. I I knew that I was ready to make a film. I'm an actor, or I was an actor. And um, I was just very frustrated with the sort of work that either I was being offered or the sort of work that I was never getting a chance to do. Um, and I'd seen a couple of people in my network making their own stuff. And I wanted to give it a go. I knew a lot of filmmakers as well and um, they gave me a lot of help. So. I knew for my first film, I wanted it to be a two-hander um, and, you know, one, maybe two locations. So really, I thought about those parameters first. And then, um, and then I just started thinking about, uh, I don't know, relationships and conflict that might arise that I hadn't seen depicted in film before. So... I, there's no concrete answer I think it all just all these thoughts were kind of swimming around in my head and then I just started thinking about this couple and this story and sort of developed it from there the first few drafts were really really terrible <laughs> but then I did a lot of work on it and um yeah it's it started more with wanting to just find something to direct and write and act in myself and then this story just felt like it made sense to me and uh I sort of tried to run with it 
Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it's a story. It, it was, you know, it's not something I've seen a tremendous amount of, um, that sort of storyline, but also, you know, it's, it's I won't, without any spoilers, you know, it's, um, I thought it, you dealt with it really sympathetically and, and you know, and it was a really interesting and, you know, yeah, sort of kind way of, of approaching this subject, you know, I think. Um, well, I think there's a lot of discussion at the moment about gender identity and gender politics. And um, I think, it, yeah, I don't want to give too much away as well, but really it came from as well thinking, you know, how would I react if somebody I knew was struggling with, with a part of their identity? And what, what could I do to try and, you know, help yeah. them embrace, especially if it's something that they felt they needed to hide, which is, I think, what this character does to begin with, mm. his character, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's Ryan Hayes, of course. Um, He's brilliant, yeah. yeah. He's a great actor, yeah, really, um, really great. I mean, one of the things that really struck me with it has that you had a fantastic on-screen chemistry, you know, it was, it was very easy to believe and watch you two as, yeah. as a couple and, and that thing. I mean, had you worked with him before? Did you know him before or was it an audition thing? No, so we'd worked together um, on a short film with the producer of Cross, a fantastic director called David Anthony Thomas. Um, mm. So we'd, I met him, uh, I think in summer 2017 for like a rehearsal or like a meeting for this film, pre-production for the film that I did with David. And then we shot in January, 2018. And um, he was someone I just kept in touch with. And uh, I was obviously, you know, really enjoyed his work. I think he's such a strong actor. And um, we actually didn't have scenes together in, our, in the film that we were first cast in with David. Um, but uh, when it came to casting, I kind of just got in touch with him and sent him a terrible version of the script. <laughs> There was a lot of work that went on the script. So I did send him a terrible version. And luckily it was at least okay enough for him to be like, you know what? We had some of the same team from the previous film as well. We had the same DOP, Rory Sketch. We had the same producer, well, we had David as producer. So I think those things, it felt comfortable and familiar. And um, he came on board. I did more script work and then actually based on some of my script, we did a bit of improvisation. So I think that's where some of the, and we do have natural chemistry. He's a really good mate of mine. So um, it just felt very comfortable. I mean, you have to be comfortable to do some of those scenes, I think, especially yeah. Yeah. especially when you're directing yourself as well. Um, you just need to be able to trust an actor. Yeah, um, yeah so he's, he's a wonderful actor. I think he's gonna go far, definitely. Oh, fantastic. Um, so, I noticed, I was sort of looking down your IMDb page, so you've got another film post-cross called Jinx. Tell us about Jinx. Yeah. Ah, so Jinx was shot on Super 8 for the Straight 8 competition. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I think because I've come from an acting background, I felt like a bit of a fraud at times because I've always loved watching film, but I'm very aware of what I don't know in terms of the technical aspects. So when people would talk about shooting on 16 millimeter or eight millimeter and all this kind of stuff. I didn't know really what that meant other than I knew it was on film. You know, I didn't, I wasn't as astute, I guess, at being able to like see something and be like, oh, it was shot in this way or on this. Mm. And um, I had a couple of mates in the past that had done straight A competition. And then, um, so it was in the back of my mind. And then um, it was one December, in 2019, I think, I just woke up in a panic because Cross had come out, Cross had done a few festivals and suddenly I was like, what am I gonna do with my life? What's the next thing? <laughs> and I woke up at like, I think it was like three o'clock in the morning or something. And then I just entered the straight eight competition because I was thinking, right, this has a deadline. This is gonna force me to make something. And, <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, I had my deadline for February. Um, and just to explain what the straight eight competition is, you have to make a film on one roll of super eight, which usually lasts between three minutes and three minutes, 20 seconds. You can only do in edit, cam um, sorry, in camera editing. Um, and there's no post-production. So 
with, with those parameters, I, I just knew that it was going to be an exciting way to hone my craft a little bit, um, get more confident working with camera and it would give me a chance to work on film as well. So, so Jinx, that was the origins of Jinx. And then the actual story was a script that I'd written years ago, um, which was terrible as well. <laughs> but then I adapted it to fit I made it a silent film, which is actually, I found really useful actually, because I think maybe you're the same, you write or you've, you've produced films, yeah. It's so easy just to like over egg the pudding with dialogue, too much dialogue, just explain things away. And it was just so refreshing to be like, I can't do that now. Everything needs to be shown visually. Mm. So it's quite an exciting way of making a film. Like, I think making that made me a more disciplined filmmaker um, I know with Cross, I would, we were under quite intense time pressures because we only had a two day shoot, but I would still want to be like, no, let's go again, let's go again, especially because I was cast myself in it and I've got this act of vanity where I want it to be as good as it can be in terms of performance. And then with Jinx, it's like you had one chance, you had to go. And then I brought some of that discipline onto my next film um so yeah I I love doing it I would recommend everybody make a super eight film or a straight eight film uh, or something similar like that to hone your craft it was fun as well yeah yeah I, mean, I know everyone is uh, I know friends that have done it have said much the same you know it's just it's just the, the thrill of having to get everything right first time you know um, yeah definitely yeah um so you're an actor, a writer, a director, and a producer. <laughs> well, is there, is there one of those things that, that sort of, you know, is there a list of, you'd say, well, first I'm this, first, then I'm that, then I'm that, then I'm that, or? You know, it's funny. I, when I first made Cross, I made it definitely with the intention of making it my thing to act, so I could act in something. And then, yeah. you know, uh, I didn't realize how much I was gonna love being in the driving seat. Um, and I made Jinx and I cast myself in that as well. Obviously nepotism, I'm gonna cast myself. <laughs> um, and actually my third film Feast, which is in post-production, yeah, I've cast myself in that as well. But I absolutely love the directing side to it. I struggle more with the writing because I think writing, you have to shut yourself off more. Mm. I try and be disciplined, but I just procrastinate so much. If someone says I've got a day of writing, I had to do a day of writing, I would dread it. Whereas if it's a day of sitting in a room, collaborating, uh, I, I'm a much better collaborator, I think, than, than writer. And actually I co-wrote my, my descript. Producing, I don't like producing. I just, it's, <laughs> it's a necessary evil to get things done. I don't, I, I don't have the most organized brain, you know, I just kind of, I like being a creative producer on other projects. Uh, I've, I've done that, I've done co-producing. That was fun because there was, you know, less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Less pressure if you're co-producing, but like, yeah, producing, it's the boring stuff. It's the making the phone calls. It's the booking of this, it's the doing the insurance. Mm. But, you know, so yeah, if you want to make your own stuff, I can't afford to pay another producer. So I'll just have to do it. But, um, but yeah, I think now directing is, I just have to, keep honing my craft I guess because there's a lot of brilliant directors out there um and it, it, there's a lot of a lot of competition which is healthy um yeah. so yeah I need to just need to hone my craft and get more confident and just keep making stuff I think keep watching stuff as well yeah okay yeah so which brings me probably to my last question everyone hates this question so um <laughs> here we go is do you have a favorite director oh um, yes, not just one, there, there's plenty. <laughs> I, get, I get inspired by, there, there's certain moments to stay uh, uh, in my head. Um, Bergman's Cries and Whispers is one of my favorite films. Um, and actually I drew on that a lot when I was watching Cross because there's such intimacy between some of the characters mm. um, in, in one, one scene in particular. Uh, and. It, it, crackles it crackles and fizzes off the screen and he's just got this magic um i really am inspired by um, mark jenkin who did bait um i thought that was a brilliant brilliant film um 
I'm quite interested in directors like pathways to making films as well, like how they got the chance to make something. Mm. And um, so, yeah, who else? Oh God, there's so many. Yeah, it's a hard question. Um, uh, Sarah Gavron, I loved Rocks. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant film. Um, enjoyed Suffragette a few years ago as well when that came out. I don't know, it's such a hard question. My mind's gone blank now. I'm like, I can't, no, it's, it's, I can't think of any directors now. But yeah, there's, um, yeah, they're just it's quite eclectic, quite eclectic mix of directors, which I think is good. And people around me as well that are, I'm inspired by people around me that are making exciting stuff and pushing forward. There's so much rejection in this industry, isn't it? So it's always, it's always quite inspiring to see people kind of charge forward and jump over those obstacles and kind of show you little shortcuts. And Absolutely, yeah. No, I who are your favourite directors? Oh, golly. See, you know, no one's asked me that. Um, uh, um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I sort of, I, I've got a soft spot for Terence Malick. Um, and, yeah. uh, and um, God, my. I've seen less of his work. I actually, I, I can't remember seeing a Terence Malick film. And I know that sounds ridiculous because. There was a thin red yeah. line and, um, yeah. and the tree of life and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, um, but then, but then um, I was just chatting to someone earlier. We were talking about Terence Malick and. Um, yeah, just saying that, you know, some of his stuff just seems inspired, brilliant and beautiful, and some of it just seems insufferable, you know, it's sort of, it, but it's kind of, I think it's very true to him, you know, probably, um, you know, he's, he's he just films what he wants to film, and um, yeah. whether, whether that, whether you like it or not, and uh, there's something <laughs> about that which seems quite freeing, you know, but, but um, Anyway, thank you so much for chatting to us today, Gillian, and well done again on such a brilliant film, Cross, um, which is on uh, as part of Shorts 5 on Friday the 30th of April is when it's screening, and you can get tickets at um, unrestrictedview.co.uk or uvff.co.uk. And straight after this, we're going to have a little taster trailer of Cross. And thanks again, Gillian. Good to see thank you. Thank you so much for um, including Cross. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the other film selected but lovely lovely to meet you and, and you. enjoy the rest of lockdown <laughs> all right thank you see ya